The path to 10 and 2 is still alive with a win over Rice by a commanding score of 41 to 7. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co host, Steve Feck, that finally has a pretty nice hat on the top of his head, Steve. I'm glad to see that that finally came in just in time for the last game of the season, Conference USA home game championship game, and then a potential good, very good bowl we got coming up here for the UTSA Roadrunners. Looks good on you, my friend. That, thanks. I mean, I was I was really excited. You know, it's uh, it, it got here just before game time, so it was perfect. Um, luckily, it was pretty one sided, so I d- I didn't have that urge to throw it across you know the room or throw it at the TV if something was going wrong. But I mean, what a start! What a start for the Road Runners. You know, Frank. Once Frank Harris broke loose from uh, for that sixty three yarder. It was just a matter of time before the yeah. Roadrunners were going to be lifting up that Conference USA regular season championship trophy. You know, the first, you know, three first quarter touchdowns, it set the stage. UTSA defense played basically backstage bully security guard, you know, for, for the big concert, for the big event there. They, they probably would go underappreciated if you just look at the scoreboard, but, you know, the defense played really, really well. Harris ran for three scores. He threw for two. Uh, you know, Jeff Sackett kicked two field goals in the third quarter in less than ideal conditions. The rain started to come down a little bit harder in the second half. So I, you always like to see that consistency going there. They had 262 rushing yards. Yeah. And on the other side, allowed five. That's my favorite stat so far of the defense. I mean, we talk about how great this offense is, and we're going to dig more into it in a minute. But I mean, come on, Steve. We had we've had the the concerns about the defense all year, and the last two games, turnovers, and now we got the run stopping defense five yards. Are you kidding me? On thirty two rushing attempts at that too. Yeah, and it, and honestly, they got to the point that they just stopped trying. I mean, I, I mean, I know they got three yards rushing in the second half because they had two yards at halftime. I honestly don't remember, it, and I watched the entire game, so I might have been maybe tweeting something or whatever, or admiring myself in my Roadrunner hat where I, where I didn't catch the <laughs> one run that happened for three yards. But honestly, God, it, it just, it, it, I mean, it didn't help Rice losing their quarterback in the first half. Uh, so having to throw all the time and come from behind. It it was it was not an, an owl day, if you will. But UTSA uh, showed the people that they deserve to be ranked. And just for the record, I had my shaver here because I I have that pledge. I'm not going to shave until UTSA is ranked in the top 25. Technically, coaches in poll. the coaches poll, they are ranked 25. But I'm not going to get out of it that easily. That's right. I, I want to hold the AP's feet to the fire. They, they've they've been putting out some pretty crappy polls for a good chunk of the season. So until they get those two votes that they need, they were two, two votes. votes shy. Man. Okay. And then I mean, and you can argue, well, Texas has four losses. Yeah, but they did beat UTSA. So uh, okay. All right, that's fine. You can be ranked behind Texas, but UCF, I don't think UCF showed any any reason to stay in, in the 25 based yeah. on their performance this past week. So eventually I'll be able to just turn on the uh the old shaver. I'll, I'll do a little trim job here. Uh-oh. Kind of, okay. Just, All right, just, to, just to kind of preview us here. But uh, okay. I mean, yeah, but I, I think finally what all of us as Roadrunner fans. I mean, I mean, we're supposed to be media people, so we're not supposed to be fans. But, you know, they're like family now, uh, the UTSA fan base. Okay. So, yeah, so we can wait another week. I have no doubt that they will uh, get into the top 25. And I still think they're going to finish within the top, within the top 20 as well. As In one week of shaving, you're going to catch up to me? Is this what that's going to look like after one week or? Um, well, no, you, as it is, you can barely see it cause it's all gray and I already have that half dad ashen look to my face anyway. So you really can't see it very, very well, but I, I'm like that new lawn you plant. 
and then you get really excited because you start seeing the initial sprouts. Ah. Then you have to then you have to wait till like the end of August to see the rest of the grass comes in to, and eventually it will come in. You know, <laughs> if, if you go back through old videos of me on various podcasts, I do, I have had a full beard. But at this point where it's all gray and everything, yeah, it's hard to really tell. So I don't know how much of a sacrifice that it is, though I have said on Twitter to and various places with UTSA fans, my face is made for podcasting <laughs> already. So to have to have a, an additional ugly mark on my face uh, to have to watch while you're watching it on YouTube, I, I do apologize for that. But I'm a man of my convictions. I'm standing by my convictions until UTSA gets into rankings. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen this coming week. Rice does move to five and six. They are going to still be bowl eligible alive, if you will, taking on North Texas next week. North Texas is going to be the opponent for UTSA in the Conference USA Championship if they get that win over Rice. Um, if they do lose, they still have it as long as Western Kentucky doesn't get a win on their side. So uh, you, North Texas, I know that some of these UTSA fans don't really like North Texas. I see that on the socials. Um, yeah. That will be your opponent um, if they do beat Rice this coming week. If Rice loses, they will not be in a bowl. They will move to five and seven. Um, what I have to say about UTSA here. 41 to 7 was the final, but there are still some things that could be improved. There were still two turnovers on the day. That is things that can still be improved moving into next week's game. Frank Harris was absolutely electric. Just like you said, 227 total yards, five touchdowns uh, with his name on it. Uh, and then he had eclipsed 10,000 career yards of total yards in his career. He's actually at 10,180. He's just pushing his school record even farther. So congratulations to Frank for hitting that 10,000 career mark. Fantastic. Hope that we can see that move even farther next year uh, with that one extra year of eligibility, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm um, really hope we see that one here. Uh, UTSA moves to nine and two. The chance for 10 and two is well alive and they head in to play. UTEP, they host UTEP. Another game, but just like Rice, a five-win team. This is the last chance for UTEP to be bowl eligible, um, and that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, they have won the past few games against UTEP. I believe it's a, a five-game winning streak, if I remember correctly. The, the last five games, they have won against UTEP. They're five and two, if I believe correctly. One of our UTSA friends uh, put that up on the socials, so I think I do remember that saying. So, um, with this being said, we have a 3.30 game Eastern time. UTEP taking on UTSA. Should be a good matchup. We will definitely be previewing that one towards the beginning of the week uh, with the Thanksgiving holiday. We'll get that to you a little earlier this week, Steve. So another cool thing to be excited about with UTSA football. Absolutely. I, I'll have to keep this hat on all week, I guess, is the way, way, way it's going to have to be. But, you know, I watched the first quarter of the UTEP game, and they came out pretty strong. I mean, I was really impressed. I mean, I, I didn't see the final score of this past week, but I'm like, well, okay, so I guess it's not going to be just a total slam dunk coming up against UTEP. I mean, that maybe the defense is going to have to, you know, dig their cleats in a little bit, a little bit deeper in this game. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm so glad that the Conference USA title is clinched now. Uh, their last one they'll ever be able to win because they're moving on to the American next year. That's right. I, 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 what a great football conference that's going to be next it's year. It's going to be but so it, fun. Yeah, but you know, we'll be doing our previews eventually. Let's let's enjoy this season first before we get down into previews and thinking about next year. Even though having watched the Giants today, I, I really wish that Frank Harris would come out early <laughs> so he could be the quarterback for, for my New York football Giants. But. Yeah, well, the score for UTEP was 40-6 to six against FIU. That's the farthest of a preview, and the farthest we'll get into UTEP in this one. We'll talk about them um, in the middle of the week when we preview this game. Uh, this is going to be a good game, just like always. Good way to finish off the season. 10-2. and two. That can really set themselves up. We're starting to see the American kind of uh, eat themselves in, uh, if you, in a few ways, if you will. And if we can see UTSA hit that top 25, get ahead of some of these other G5 teams, Maybe we can find them sneak into one of those um, NY6 bowls. I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, I would love to see it happen. Maybe that maybe that win after the uh, Conference USA Championship seals the deal. Regardless, what a great season is happening so far. You look at Jeff Trailer's record so far in the last two seasons. It's been just absolutely incredible. Way to go, UTSA. We'll have this preview for you uh, coming up in the middle of the week. But let me know your thoughts of the game. You thought, yeah, that's right. Do you think that it was a, a great win? 
Do you were you worried about any of the turnovers that happened, even though it was a 41 to 7 victory? Um, still again, not firing on all cylinders exactly, but some things to still be hopeful for the means that there's only room to improve. Um, and always thank you so much for watching Slasher You.